Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the Agora RTM SDK or now known as signaling to add in more functionality into your audio video call and applications that use the Agora RTC SDK. So let me show you what I mean right now. So right now we have this audio call and application and we're displaying these users and the audio data is being transmitted between these users but the only thing we're able to display is the RTM UID. Now, if you've used Agora RTC before, you'll understand that you're limited in the data that you can pass through. You can only get the user ID, maybe the actual data itself, but there's really no way of passing in like an avatar or that username. So that's what we're gonna use RTM for. We married these two together in the last video in the series. So if you're not part of it, we actually integrated Agora RTM into this voice calling app and we're just gonna go ahead and start using it to add features. So Agora RTM takes care of a lot of our DOM manipulation, uh, handling what happens when users join or leave, and then RTC takes care of the data signaling. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this GitHub repo and check out what we have here, and we'll look at the guide. So uh, this video or this GitHub repo is linked down in the video description, so go ahead and check this out. And if you're following this series, go to folder number five, and we're gonna talk about how this works. So we'll go into guide.md. This is the written guide for this video. And let's just see how this is done. So this is actually very simple. There's two main things that you need to do to make this work. So there is this method called add or update local user attributes. So in order to add an attribute to a user, we're just gonna call this method and we give it some key value pairs. So we have a key and a value, key and a value. Uh, this key would be something like name, the value would be my name. And then key number two could be something like avatar, the value would be the URL of the avatar. So we add an attribute, that's it, very simple to do. You'd normally call this when you initialize RTM and when you join a new room. Now to retrieve that attribute, also very easy. We just call the get user attribute by keys method here. And all we need to do here is pass in the member ID. So that is one value you do have by default. So when a user joins by default, you have their ID. And what we do is we give it a list of keys that we wanna extract or receive. So key one would be again, the name, key two would be let's say the avatar. And then we just destruct that and get those values. And now we can use those values on the remote end. So it's actually very easy to do. Let's go ahead and build this out in our application. And I'm just gonna copy this method right now just because it's such a long method, I don't wanna write it out. And we're gonna put this into our application. So inside of our init RTM method, we have our RTM client, we log in, and then we join a room. So right after we join, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set those values. In fact, I think I'm gonna put this right after our RTM client initialization. So we're gonna call RTM client dot add or update local user attributes. And we're just gonna pass in for now, we're only gonna do one, we're just gonna pass in the name. Now the name is gonna be the value of what we pass into the init RTM method. And we haven't sent this yet. So this is just an empty string right now. So let's actually go into that init RTM method and pass in the name. So the name here is gonna be the value from the form field, which we don't have yet, but we're about to set. So right now it's an empty string. That's a display name. It gets passed into init RTM. So we're just gonna call e.target dot display name dot value. So it's display name all lowercase. So now inside of our HTML, we have this input field that we actually have uh, commented out. We're just gonna go ahead and uncomment it. So it has the value of display name. And there we, go, there we just go ahead and enter it in. So that's all we do. We'll make this a required field. So that way users need to submit it. Okay, so we submit this form field. So if I go back to my project here, now we have to submit it. If I enter this, I submit the name. We still don't see it here. So what we need to do is now receive it on the remote end. So the first thing I'll do is actually go to handle member joined. So when a member joins, right now we're just getting their member ID and we're passing it through and that's how we're getting that value. Well, we're gonna go ahead and call the next method here. So we're gonna call this method, which is get user attributes by keys. And we're gonna call that on the RTM client. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna call await RTM client dot get user attribute by keys. We're passing in the member ID, and then we just want an array of all the keys that we wanna retrieve. And I just wanna make sure I'm doing this right. So we pass in the keys. And right now we only added in one key. So if we go back to our init RTM method, we passed in 
one key, so that is what we are retrieving. So we pass in the name, and we also want to destructure this. So let's go ahead and get this value. So we'll just go ahead and get the name. So that's going to be the return value. We get that name, and that's it. So we get the user attribute by key. And all we need to do now is pass in this name value into the paragraph tag. So check this out. So when we join, we should still only see our ID. So let's just try this. We'll add in Dennis. But when we enter, we only see our ID because of how we're getting our own information. But when we join with a remote user, let's just use my wife's name, Solomita. Let's enter. In theory, I should now see my wife's name. And there we go. So we see it. Now, the local user doesn't see it because this value or this uh, element in the DOM is being added by the get members function. So handle member joined gets that attribute. But when we join on initialize RTM, so when we initialize RTM, we call get channel members. So let's go ahead and find that. So let's call get channel members. Here we have this method. So we have all the members here. So as we loop through each member, let's go ahead and actually get those attributes. So I'm going to paste this in. So we called let name RTM client get user attribute by keys. And at this point, we need the current member that we're iterating through. That's going to be I like that. So we pass that in. And now we can get this name and pass it in right here. So let's see, I have a bracket there. I want to take that out. And let's try this again. So we're going to call Dennis. We're going to enter. Perfect. We're going to call Sulamita. And there we go. So pretty simple concept, right? Pretty neat. Now we have our names. We can leave, re-enter, and everything is working. So let's go ahead and check our guide. Let's see if we need to do anything else in this video. If not, we will jump to the next one. So we updated the form fields, added it into these methods, passed through these attributes, and there we go. Okay, so we do want to do one more thing though. And this is for the active speaker logic. So if you're part of this series, before when we had this, let's see the uh, init volume indicator method, we actually are not initializing this method just yet, because we don't have the RTC UID. So right here, we query get elements by class name, we try to get user dash RTC dash volume UID, which is going to be the RTC UID, not the RTM UID. Well, we don't have this yet, because we didn't set it anytime we create an element. So check this out. So if we go to get members, we just have user RTC and then two hyphens. So we want to fix this right now. So what do we do here? Well, we can just pass in one more attribute. So let's look at our example here. We're going to pass in a key called user RTC UID. So when we call the init RTM method, we're just going to go ahead and do user RTC UID. And we're going to pass in RTC UID like that RTC UID. I just want to make sure you can see that. But there's one small issue here. So as we add this attribute, we just want to make sure that this is passed along as a string. So we'll just do to string, uh, we can't pass through integers here. So I've had issues with it before. So we just want to make sure that RTC UID is passed in as a string. So now it's just user RTC UID. And now on the retrieving end, we're going to go to two methods here. First, we're going to go to handle member joined. And we're going to get that user RTC UID. And remember, we need to pass that in to this array. So we're going to retrieve that. And now we can just go ahead and throw this value in here. So we got the value, we pass it in. So now we have the user RTC UID like that. So the value is set. Now inside of the get members method, we're going to do the same thing. So we're getting the user RTC UID. We're going to pass this along into that array. And then down here, let's just go ahead and pass that through. So now if I go ahead and look at these users, so let's enter a room, we'll just enter as Dennis here. If I do inspect element here, I should be able to see the RTC UID. So now I see speaker user RTC 1436. And then we have the RTM UID, which is 1270. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and turn on our volume indicator. And in theory, it should work. If there's any issues, uh, we'll fix them right here. So let's go ahead and uncomment that. Now the volume indicator should work. So if I join here, we'll join as Dennis again. And we'll check the console. So let's actually refresh it. I just want to always look for errors and fix them as we're working here. So 
let's just go ahead and uncomment or unmute. So now the volume indicator is working. If I stop talking, it turns white and then green, and then I can mute it. Perfect, it's all working. So let's try adding in a remote user. So let me the unmute. Okay, so we have two users now, so that's why I'm hearing that echo, but everything is working. So that volume indicator is back on. So uh, let's see. I think we got everything we needed. So we have the volume indicator and that's it. So in the next video, what we're gonna work on is creating custom rooms. So right now we've only been joining one room called main. So we just have our room ID up here. We're gonna change this to be an input field from our form. We're gonna add in a new field here and we're gonna join a room with a name and then we'll finish this up with displaying our user avatar. So if I zoom out here, we have one called displaying avatars. We'll add those avatars. So I'll see you all in the next video.